collaboration can improve teaching and learning. And Spark, if you're not aware of the concept, stands for sharing pedagogy and primary knowledge. And it's a teaching organisation. Uh, a couple of years ago, myself and a few other educators in the five were growing increasingly frustrated with the lack of collaboration opportunities. Uh, far more than what works, uh, we found that there was nothing going on in terms of teachers getting together, sharing good practice, and being able to get to know each other. Um, we'd also been reading about Teach Meets. Uh, teach Meets is not that new a phenomenon, really. It started in about 2007, and it's a very simple idea. It just means getting a group of teachers um, into a room and giving them the opportunity to share their ideas. Um, and it basically takes the form of two and seven minute presentations in which you share an idea. Um, and what's good about that is that if that idea isn't relevant to you in your classroom, uh, then it quickly uh, kind of moves on. In the last two years, we've had something like 50, if you count what works as well, we've had about 16 um, of these events. Most of them have been in Dubai. We've also gone a little further afield, to Bahrain, Doha. Um, and some of our events, but most of them are generic, so they can apply to, to anybody in anybody's classroom. Some of them have been more focused. So we had a, this year, for example, a modern foreign languages focused event at Dubai College. We've also had a, an SLT uh, focused event um, at Guess. What we're after, really, is a professional development model that works um, and that has an impact, of course on student learning. Um, and what we hope to uh, ignite, I guess, with the teaching um, is this idea of confidence. And if you're sitting out there today and you are a teacher and you've never presented before, then the teach me should hope you have that confidence that you've got something to offer too. And also the confidence to go away um, and try out these new ideas. We want it to be fun. Um, and also this OK plateau, this, this research that shows that once you've been in teaching for a living while, um, that your the experience doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get better. You get to a point and then it kind of plateaus out. Um, and also to challenge and um, challenge some of your thinking. What we're going to showcase today um, is a short example of what a teaching as far as event is like. Um, a normal teaching happens uh, or goes on for about three hours. You obviously don't have three hours for each session this morning, so we just want to give you a little bit of a taster. Um, of what happened. And um, also, if you are interested in hosting an event uh, next year, next academic like year, then do please take my card at the end of all my details um, and I'll be able to get on. Okay, first up then, um, we've got Neil. Neil is from my school. I need to present this first. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Feels like the afternoon. It's been a long, it's been a long morning so far. Uh, thank you for your attention. Um, my name's Neil Oates. I'm currently head of house and uh, head of primary computing uh, at um, DBS Library School. Um, and what I'm going to talk to you about today is something that I'm really passionate about. And something that's really worked, I feel, this year at DBS is maybe an idea that you can take back to your own school. And not necessarily, I think we've made all of it. No, I'm not saying this is the best way of doing it. I'm just expressing to you what we've done and, and the ideas that we've, we've formed from that. Okay? And it's all about this idea of distributed student leadership and how you can use that not only to support your pastoral system, okay, to help uh, students develop, but also about how you could use it to develop inquiry based learning in the classroom. And I've actually used this quite successfully this year so far. So. Key things that we want to go on about, things that we want to talk about are we want to empower student leaders. That's what we want to do. So we've got a house system, we've got a prefect system. And the whole premise of that is to empower them, to make them um, develop those leadership skills we want them to have moving forward. Okay? We want to engage them as well in an electoral process. So this year, for the first time, not based on the teacher movement, a student came to leadership of the school and they said they want to implement a presidential system. They want to implement their own elections for a student president. Okay? And we went with that. We took an idea from students and we implemented that in the school. I think it's a massive strength. I, I would suggest any school that doesn't currently engage with the student body, they should definitely try and do something similar. 
And we want to use student leadership in the classroom to promote inquiry and engagement. Give you some ideas of how I do that. So we have student elections. Yeah. An independent electoral commission was appointed. Sounds a little technical. Basically, the students formed their own committee as to how the election should be run. Amazing. Okay? No involvement by the student, by teachers. It was basically the politics students coming together and deciding the process that we should have. So a free and independent election. Pretty good. Um, we had two debate, debates between seven candidates. So we had a stage with seven students, young men and women, debating the issues facing that school in front of the entire student body. Think about the impact that will have on our year seven to year 11 students. Seeing role models, people there, not so far removed from themselves, taking a lead in the school, okay? Has a massive impact. Who can I aspire to? Who can I, who can I learn from? These are the people in front of me, okay? Um, outcome. So this is what's happened so far this year. We've got an outstanding school president, school president and vice president was chosen. And um, we've seen an upturn in academic progress along, amongst those students who were leaders. So within our uh, house captains and within our student pre presidents and, our, and the students who are a part of that, we've seen them develop and do better academically as a result of that. Their engagement has improved despite the added responsibilities. Okay? Um, and we've got some students who are developing significant leadership skills. Okay? So just a few examples. So these, are our, these are our president and vice president. Okay, uh, they're very, very nice. This is actually an event that they're doing where they're doing some, some house cakes. Okay, um, and they've been absolutely inspirational in our school. This guy on the right, he's our president, he's Garrett, um, and he's led uh, speeches for the school. He's, he's led um, the house system. This one here on the left, Elliot, he's done some promotional material for us. He's run a student marketing team, okay, which has raised over 30,000 dirhams for the school sponsorship. That wouldn't have happened without these two students, okay? Absolutely brilliant, all right? Um, these are our house captains, amazing leaders amongst the schools, okay? So they're the, 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 the voice and the embodiment of what we want from our house system, okay? This is what I want. Smiling students taking a lead in that role, okay? Um, other things that we could show. So this is one example of something the students did. This was a video that they made. About a slave race, I'm just going to play a couple of minutes of this, just to give you an idea of the impact. Because this would have happened without that. Absolutely. Welcome back to the Dubai British School slave race derby. The first of many, we hope, we can see in the team group beginning that they set up procedures down the cars that can be very, uh, I'm not quite sure what the word for that would be, very decorated perhaps. Uh, the crowds can get very excited and the race is already lining up to begin. And you can see the Daniel Slay here, written by Hamad and Michaela, the house captains. It's, it's a very, Outstanding house that's what they've been doing all year. And you see the laughter, the smiles on the faces, the way that they're, they're engaging in the school community. They're role models. They're, that's the sort of thing that we want our students to see, to see them being parts of this collective part of the school, the benefits we can have. Okay? And that's one small one, one part <coughs> Other things that students have done. So the sponsorship they've brought in. So they managed to get um, Xbox to come in, 
Microsoft and give us a free Xbox One for a prize, for our prize going, for our prize system, our, our prize award system. They managed to get sponsors to come in. So they've run a sponsorship group who invited businesses to come in. They've pitched, business pitch, to FTSE 100 companies to ask for money to support our prize award system. And they've managed to be successful. They've brought in money that I would never have even thought was possible. They've managed to do it. If you give students the opportunity, if you give them the ability to fail and to try new things, they will deliver, as we've seen at DBS. Okay? Other things, these are some of the prizes that we've given away to students. The engagement, we're giving some a reward for student effort as a result of this. Okay? So not only are the students contributing to our story, they're contributing to our praise and reward system, to the, to the engagement and the motivation of students across the school. Okay? Um, the other thing that our students managed to do, which I could never do, could you imagine asking staff to dress up like that? I couldn't. I couldn't do it. I couldn't convince them. But our students, for whatever reason, if you give them the opportunity to take a lead, they're able to convince people. They've even managed to convince Superman to come and play a goal for a penalty shooter. All these things are the things that we couldn't do ourselves. But students can do it. We've got that ability. You give them the opportunity. Okay? And these are our winning houses. So, so, what we've got as a result from this year, we've got our students taking full control over all the development of house events across the school. Okay? Myself, head of house, I've been able to scale up my involvement. It's student run, it's student led. Okay? Prefects, now we've, we've developed this idea of doing lunchtime duties, etc. And that's where we're going with it next year. Okay? And what we've seen, more engagement across the house system, events run for students, by students, and we've seen a marketing team bringing up a large amount of money. Okay? So, that's what we've done with the house system. How can it help you in the classroom? What is it you can do? Okay? So, for example, um, our year 10 business and economics groups this year, what we decided to do was run student mini businesses within, within the school. So, like an enterprise again. But what we did instead is we brought in a recruitment company, an external recruitment company, interview students for roles, positions of responsibility in the classroom. So we had CEOs appointed, we had marketing managers, and we run it as a competitive system. And what we saw was students really respond to that. You'd be amazed at the, the comments that we got from our external recruitment companies that came in. They said, some of our students, three years time, come give me a, your CV, I'll give you a job. They were that outstanding. And they responded really positively. So by giving them key roles within the classroom, they start to take ownership of their learning. I'm teaching cash flow next week. I've got three students teaching it for me. They're taking a lead in the classroom. They're the ones who are pushing forward. Okay? And because they're running as, as groups where they're competing with each other, there's a real motivation for them to push further, to be inquiry-led. Because to compete, to win in this competition, they need to get ahead of the competitors. Competition. So they're almost, they have to use inquiry led learning. They have to push their own learning and take ownership for it because otherwise they don't win. And it's one of those key things that I've seen that have really increased in the level of motivation and the level of student game. Okay? Um, so these are some of the examples of some of the things they've done. They've, they've produced boxes, we've got some t shirts we've made, and they've had a great time. They've really enjoyed it. They've made a lot of money so far, which is pretty good. Um, so, outcome, increase in engagement, collaboration improved, uh, we've seen a lot more inquiry-based learning across those groups. So what I'll leave you with, what I would like you to have a think about doing, okay? Think about if you can build a company-based structure, some sort of competitive environment within your own classroom. How could you implement that, okay? Could you make use of a reward system that's linked, okay, to this system? And finally, the biggest thing that I would, I would ask every school to consider, how can you get students in leadership school roles, give them the opportunity to fail, and learn from their mistakes? That's what I'd ask you to try to do.
participation uh, in this next presentation. I'm going to show you something called Kahoot, which is a interactive um, style of game, sort of a quiz, that I do with my pupils uh, very often in uh, assessing how they've got on during the lesson. Okay, so the best way to show you is to, to get you to do yourself. Can you please go on to, on your phones, iPads, whatever it is you have, can you please go on to uh, kahoot.it and it will ask you to put a game pin, whatever you've got, if you've got a phone, iPad, anything, okay? Put your nickname in, try and keep it clean. I'll try and get as many of you can quickly. So it's the IT and then put in the game
So if I go to any quiz now, we won't do the rest. So Dixon, congratulations, you are uh, the most knowledgeable about the buy today, whatever you want. Uh, okay, so once, once I've done the quiz over, you can then click on feedback results. Okay, so now on your devices, you can fill in like a short questionnaire about whether or not you, you felt that you learned something from it, it would make you happy. Would you recommend it for somebody else to do that quiz? And so on. Okay, if you then go around, thank you, that is your results, the results will come up, okay, and then you can download them straight away into an Excel document, okay. On that document you have a list of uh, students, you will be able to instantly see obviously who got the most correct, who got the most incorrect, you can see which ones, which can then help you with your planning for next lesson, what what part of the lesson they not understand, what part of the subject you need to work on. Okay. What is also very nice to do sometimes is actually to do the quiz at the start of the lesson, okay, and actually come back to it at the end of the lesson and put them almost into a graph, okay? And you can really see, the students can really see the development they've made during the lesson. Um, one final Okay. One final thing about it, which is really, really helpful, is there is almost, I know we did that quiz on Dubai, but if you go on to the public cahoots, there's thousands, okay, thousands and thousands of quizzes already made up, so you can do your own, but you can also access other people's. <coughs> so, as a me English teacher, I have 12 Night, Arthur Miller, there's thousands of them, so it's, it's really good in terms of saving time when you're implementing this into your lesson so you have the choice to make your own and also access one to the Um, and what they advocate 
a sort of lesson study. So teachers working together for a sustained period of time on pedagogy, leading to improvement um, in their classrooms. They also um, offer um, a CPD audit. Okay, so, and, and their brochure is freely available online. Um, and in that brochure, it gives you kind of a benchmark for, for you to assess your uh, professional development program for games. Things like Twitter, things like Teach Weeks, for me, are part of a, a wider revolution, really, in professional development, and teachers taking control of their professional development for themselves. Um, there's a rise in teachers' blogging as a self-reflective tool and for sharing their ideas. Uh, there's a rise in teach meetings, there's a rise in people using Twitter, there's a rise in teachers using <coughs> um, action-based research as a way of improving their teaching practice. And gone are the days when SDSLT were the, the, the knowledge um, creators and the knowledge sharers. I remember going into my school back in the UK years ago and there would be folders of AFL stuff and all these things in um, the deputy head's um, office that they would then share with us. Um, however, those days are gone, and with the on onset of technology, uh, you can seek these things out for yourselves and improve uh, your teaching. Okay, so lesson study. I'm going to talk about what we've been doing with lesson study at desk. Um, and lesson study um, is really a, a triad of teachers. So teachers working in groups of three. Begin with the end in mind. What impact do you want to have on your students' learning? Okay, and work backwards. What can we put into place? What can we work on over a sustained period of time, which will then lead to um, those improvements? Um, and something that myself and some history colleagues, okay, there's a process there uh, that we went through. Um, so myself and two history colleagues were interested in um, investigating what we could do in terms of replacing national curriculum roles of the key stage three. As we all know, they're gone um, in the British curriculum. And what could we do? What could we put in place? So we came up with an inquiry question that we got it right. I wrote it down earlier. What's that question? Um, okay, so our question was, what impact does using success criteria based on solo taxonomy framework have on supporting students' progress and attainment in history at key stage three? Um, so we came up with a model. Um, for that, and then we tested it, and we did it over a six-week period. It's impossible to make when you're doing actual research in the classrooms because there's so many variables. It's impossible to make sweeping generalisations. However, what we did find was that solo taxonomy is definitely a useful tool for supporting students um, with their learning. And also, I wrote this up. I've written it up as a blog post, which if you want to um, be able to access, it's, it's available on the internet. Do uh, give me a shout and I'll share that with you because I've done quite a lot of research into reading, into assessment and curriculum. And all of this is freely available, as I said, in the end to brochure, which is available on their website. I'm also interested in uh, joint practice development, not just within schools, but also across schools. But I just have a great tradition of schools working very closely together, um, as we all probably know. Um, and so that's something that we're looking to encourage uh, even further. It encourages innovation. Um, any leadership team, I know there's some head teachers in the room, so I'll say it out loud, any leadership team worth its weight for me will be given teachers the time um, and the support to be able to take risks and encourage innovation um, in their classroom. This is some of the other things at N10 also. So yeah, I talked about the CPD audit, there's the lesson study, and um, they also have, there are a, a large number of schools um, in the UK who are a member of N10. Um, I've investigated it and I'm going to meet with um, the guy who's in charge, this gentleman called David Weston, uh, in the summer about what they perhaps do for us um, as a school in terms of supporting us with lesson study. What they do have is access to probably 2,000 um, different articles, um, journals, that can support people who are looking into. So if you as a school, um, at desk we want our students to be independent, confident and resilient. We're looking at independent learning or how we can make students better in uh, independent learning. They then have access to research which can help um, support us. 
Okay, um, I was at a conference at British University in Dubai last week, um, and I met with a lady, um, just by chance, who happened to be carrying out some actual research in her classroom, in an American curriculum school, at the um, how mentoring um, can support teacher learning and in terms student learning. Um, so we've agreed um, to work together on this next year and conduct a year-long pilot as to how mentoring within our schools do a baseline assessment at the start, and then at the end of the process, I look at how uh, that, that has an impact on student learning. So if you're interested um, in working with other schools, if you're interested in some of your staff getting involved in lesson study, with desk and also uh, a couple of other schools, uh, then we shout. Thank you. Okay, next we've got Chris. Okay, so Just basically say how the shoot group is done throughout the week. 
Bernie's here doing us our weekly update on how Southern Park is doing at the International School. It's been an absolutely fantastic week. We've been working really, really hard. Um, I think, yeah. <laughs> um, so the parents really, really enjoy that. I send it home on a weekly basis. Two minutes, okay? Just keeps it a bit more interactive. Um, very, very simple if you want to create them. All right, I'm not going to show you the video. But if you go onto qrstuff.com, all right, and the, the website is extremely self-explanatory. Just go in there, create a QR code, link it to websites, videos, Word documents, PDF documents, anything that you want. Print it out, cut it out. Thank you.